Hello, YouTube. This is Off Grid Gary here. I'm in Bennett. Everybody's been knowing I've been building solar generators and I've been doing off grid solar. And I've always wanted to do a video on how to build a solar generator. So I put a solar generator together. And to be fair, I've been using it, trying it out, testing it, and everything else. But I had a bunch of parts ordered for it that I had to get. Uh, but I hadn't even put on yet. So I've got everything for it except for my DC board, which will be two USB ports, a cigarette lighter, and an amp gauge. And they'll go on the other side of the box. But I do have this box fully functional. I got a 1500 watt Jax inverter. It's a pure sine wave inverter. It works really well. I ran a refrigerator on this with this system for two and a half hours straight and it didn't really pull the batteries down. So I'm figuring I probably can get six to eight hours running a refrigerator, a full size side by side refrigerator that never shuts off. I'll be replacing it soon. So, but uh, that's why I wanted to run a test with it versus something that's going to cut on and off. So I know probably for the most part, it would run a refrigerator for the most part overnight in an emergency situation, but it does run flat screen TVs. It runs sensitive electronics with this pure sine wave inverter. It's supposed to be cleaner power when it comes off our power pole. Now, whether it is or not, I don't know. I see I got a glare behind me. I, you have to ignore it as that light behind me. Uh, but for starters, I can show you this is a, the inverter. These are about 150 bucks on eBay. And it is a Jax inverter. And I gave 100 bucks for it. And I noticed now they're, they're running about $150. I bought four of these lights. These are LED. These are 18 watts each. I bought four of these with this 20 inch light bar on eBay for $34. This toggle switch was four bucks. What I did, I also took the, the toggle switch out of my inverter and I run these wires here. And I've got this toggle switch that hooks up to this to cut the inverter on and off. And it, it and again, it works well. I took it all apart because I had to I had to take some angle iron and cut it down to make these brackets, and I welded them to the box because I wanted I wanted a nice, neat look. I want a durable box. This thing I'm actually building for myself because we're out in the woods a lot. We're in the middle of nowhere. We go camping. We like to go as far away as we can, and we don't have to see. Really, we don't want to have to run into a bunch of hunters or anything else. We like to just be able to kick back, have a fire, cook supper, go camping and fishing, whatever it is we're doing. We like to do it a very remote, be very remote while we're doing it. I didn't want a pretty box. That's why I picked this old steel ammo crate. It's big. I got enough room inside of this box after it's all finished and put together. I can actually put a first aid kit in it with some other supplies. So it weighs about 60 pounds complete with the batteries and yeah that's a little bit heavy to carry on your back but if you got a four wheeler or side by side you just throw it up on the back of it and take off and go but what's nice you'll be able to turn your lights on because of these these lights here are actually going on I, i'm putting two of these lights right here and uh on the other side i have a 110 outlet with two 110 plugs with a waterproof cover and I've also got a, a, a another little light on the front that's that works with it as well. I can turn it around and show it to you, I guess. You can see this is the front. We've got a nice waterproof cover, and I got a 110 outlet in there behind it. This actually is a light that turns on. This is a light that turns on a light bar to let you know where your battery charge is. And I actually have a plug in. Let me go get it. I actually have a plug in that plugs into this port. And when you turn it, when you to plug this in, when you plug this in, It'll charge the batteries very, very slow, but it works very, very well. Uh, I plugged a 1500 watt electric heater into this thing for one minute 
and it really didn't pull the battery down, even though I know that's not a low, you're not going to pull electric heaters with this. It's not designed to pull electric heaters with it. But I'm building something that's tough, that's rugged, that'll do what I want it to do. And, uh, and like I say, this is a small one. I can build them smaller than this, or I can build them bigger than this. It don't matter. But I'm, I'm this particular one I'm building for myself. We're on the back of my four-wheeler when we hit the woods. And uh, I'm going to put this thing together. Everybody's complaining I don't make a long enough videos because they want to be able to see what we're doing. So we're going to put this together with this to make it work. For starters, this is just a regular ammo crate. Nothing, nothing fancy. And on the inside, you can see it's got two AGM batteries in it that are 35 amp hours each. On eBay, the pair of these batteries was $125 is what they cost. So they was really not that expensive. I got 70 amp hours the way they're hooked up. And you see this power cord right here? This actually goes to this receptacle. And this actually just plugs into my inverter right here like this. And it's on. And if I want to turn it on, all I got to do is, and you see, it's on. The inverter's on. You see that green light? The inverter's on. I want to turn it off. I turn my switch off and it goes off. So, everything works. And, uh, So we've modified some parts, and then we've made a bunch of parts. You know, uh, the crate, I've had to modify it. I had to cut this box out, and I actually welded the, I got a steel box, and I welded the steel box into there, and uh, everything is put together. This switch, see, it says off and on. This switch will go right in here, just like that. And I'm going to get two butt connectors out. I actually had butt connectors on this already, but they, um, I had a, uh, when I pulled them off, I actually broke them. So I'm going to, the toggle switches fits, these fit really tight on my toggle switch. So that's the whole point of all that. But we're going to go ahead and put this together. Why these things are not wanting to go on a diesel fire on them? There must be a reason. Well, get them to go on there either way. That's not going anywhere. And that's not going anywhere. Now, what we're going to do is hook this toggle switch up to where it's supposed to go.
And it works. It's plugged in and it works. So. That part is done. Now, I'm going to turn this around, put some lights on it now. We'll start wiring lights in the place. And also, the way these lights are situated on this, I don't have to worry about the angle iron that I welded in here. I don't have sharp edges on it. And, the, and with the lights on there, there's definitely no sharp edges. So I don't have to worry about hanging my leg up on it or anything like that while I'm in the woods. And I have a reason to break the first aid kit out that I'll have on board. Very nice. Look good now. And what I did, I also put two rolls of red and black wire for positive negative. So. What I'm going to do is see if I can turn this light off behind me, see if I can clear that glare. See if that seems to work a little better. You want to make sure you're not going to get cut on the water. Huh? And what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to wire these lights in on a toggle switch. Because right now the, the main part of the 
power unit's already hooked up and running. We got the battery cables that run from the battery. You know, they all run positive and negative. And of course, the red's positive, black's negative. And it's hooked up and running. We got the little switch over there in the front on the back side here hooked up, so it's up and running. And uh, so when I hook up these lights and I have the lid put on it, it's a, you can just grab it by the handle, lift it up and go. I hope I'm not boring you guys to death doing this. But I have a lot of people that ask me to um, to do a how-to video on how to build this to make it work. And so that's I'm trying to help the ones that don't know how to build them to learn how to build them. So hopefully this will help you all if you want to build one yourself. Got two positive and negative wires the same length. Now I'm going to kind of move this thing over because I got to get to my power wires over here. Actually, I think I might have to slide it over this way. Kind of ignore my camera moving it. Try to turn this where I get a little better. See, I'll get a little better view. I got to take some of the casing off this wire because it's just a hair too long. So I'm just going to cut some, a little piece of this casing off of here. bad thing about doing all this sometimes it takes a little longer than you anticipate more I like things to be kind of clean, especially when I build it. I'm the one that's going to maintain it and work on it. I want to make sure that it's right. Because the worst thing you can do is to get it put together and take it out in the woods and have something start shorting out or something, because then it just turns into a bad trip down. You want everything, make sure you got everything taped and crimped like you should. And when you do it right, the first time, you're not back taking it apart working on it. And this wire that I purchased for these lights is actually a lot heavier than the light wires themselves that came with the kit. I don't know why, even with LED lighting, they may have next to no wires as far as wire size, as far as amperage goes and stuff, but the further you travel it from your battery and so forth, you want to make sure that uh, you 
do carry a good enough wire to hook it together to where you know it's going to hold and not get pulled apart down the road. These are the wires are just so thin they just have a, a hard time making a good solid connection. So wrap your wires tight and you can put wire nuts on there if you want. Uh, kind of do whatever you want if you're building your way. I'm, on this it's light wire so I'm actually just going to use electrical tape. I don't have any uh, little terminals to put on it and I could have bought some. I just anything that's light 12 volt loads I just I like electrical tape. It's, it's not going to burn off. It's not going to melt. But this, I, you know, I can use also use this for charging up my cordless tools, and I actually use it in the shop. I can turn on my alignment machine and run my alignment machine with it. I mean, it's got multiple uses for me. I say, well, he's using a lot of electric tape there. Well, I, you know, everything should have its decent wrap. You know, you can put one wrap around it, and theoretically speaking, it's good. But I like to go two or three wraps just to be on the safe side. over a little bit. It's a little sliver, I think. Now I'm putting these all in one circuit, so the point of doing it this way so I can put it on this toggle switch. Like I say, I'll have to drill a whole lot for it here in a minute, but Got a bunch of little little slivers here I'm dealing with for the all this drilling and so forth. So. But I've been researching these things online, and they're about eighteen hundred dollars for something that does what this does without a solar panel. And actually, what I have for a solar panel, I was going to buy a hundred watt panel to put on it because a hundred watt panel would be all I needed. But I had some older panels already, and I didn't really want to have to buy one if I didn't have to. So I got an, an older panel that's two hundred and I think it's two hundred and twenty watts, something like that, and. Uh, my charge controller should have been here by now, but it ain't. I was going to wait and do it when I got the charge controller, but it might be a couple of weeks out yet. But I can always do a quickie video on that when uh, when it comes in. So.
and I do have some conduit I'm going to run over my wiring. I don't have it here right now, but I do have conduit for it. And uh, after it's all done, I will wrap all the wiring and conduit as well. So. Now what we're going to do, we're going to bear these ends off just a little bit. And we're going to test our lights to make sure they work. Even though I already know they do, but it means my inverter is already here with my power supply up and running. We'll go ahead and cut the lights on. Wow, look at there. Pretty bright. And the whole reason for this, you never know when you're out camping what the weather can do. But sometimes you need a little extra light around the campfire. And this will definitely give it to you. So now what we're going to do, I need to put a toggle switch in here for these lights. I want to drill me a pilot hole first. Always want to make sure you got everything out of the way so you don't skewer nothing behind it. Now, let me see this toggle switch so I can see what size hole we have here so I can step it up to the proper hole. I'll tell you, toggle switches are getting to the point where they're pretty cheap made. But you gotta have them, so. Not quite big enough. Well, and you know what they did? They made the outside tier for the handle just a little bit bigger than the rest of it. I do have a shop back later on I will plug in and clean my crumbs up. I'm going to run my ground wire from the toggle switch, and the reasoning for that is so I don't have to um, I guess if I take some of this wire off, it's not too hard. It's all good. Though. And I'm also wiring in this front board, which you can't see, but you will in a minute. But it's where that little light is on the front. 
And it also is where my power cord goes to. I normally listen to a little bit of music while I'm working, but I found out you got to watch what you play because there's FCC rules don't allow you to play certain bands or music on our, on the, on your videos. Now they do have some free music you can get, but it just don't sound the same as the music I care for, you know. And uh, so, with that being said. I went ahead and um, we're just doing it silent. I just need a little bit longer piece of black here. Now that I have all this run, I take these two wires and hook them together, we should see light. Gotta be careful not to squeeze these too hard because they break really, really easy.
What I'm going to do, I just take a little piece of electrical tape, and on the inside of my box where my wires are hooked to my switch, I just wrap a loop of wire right on just in case something get in there. Even though it's on the round side, I like to make sure everything is kind of tidied up. It looks nice when I go together with it. Like I said, I do have some conduit I'm going to put in here. On the inverter side, if we want to plug something in, this is an awfully small load. This is this is almost nothing to run to start with, so you don't necessarily have to laugh because I didn't put a big load on it. But you see, it's working just fine. But I. I can plug a 52 inch TV in it, it'll run it fine. I can plug a refrigerator into it, it'll run it fine. Everything works like it's supposed to work. And I'm not big into these old style lights, but what it is, I bought a new jump box that was old, it was sitting on a shelf, and the battery was dead. And I wasn't going to spend the money to put a new battery in the jump box, but I kept it for the parts. And what's nice, see, I got a little, a little light there in the front, and then this tells you the that the batteries are full. When I push that button, you can see my batteries are full. So you have a general idea how one of these goes together now. We'll go through it real quick. You got a battery, a 12 volt battery, in this case it's two. Both positives are hooked together, both negatives are hooked together. You have still have one positive and one negative wire. They go to the inverter. And all these 12 volt stuff and the lights, they all wire through the batteries, and everything goes right through there. And there you have it. You got the full setup. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the corner bell. If you have any questions, please, please get a hold of me. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye.